will um, say something now, and that is that peculiarly, after doing these recordings an hour later or so, I'm sitting in my armchair reading Paramhansa, and I've been working very slowly through numbering the miracles that he refers to in his book, The Autobiography of a Yogi. Paramahansa Yogananda. And I've been doing that over some time, spending very often a small amount of time each day reading the book, sometimes longer than a smaller time, but it's taken I don't know how many days to get to this point. Um, very likely 30 or more days. Not sure. But I got to the point on page, this is the Ananda um, edition, 286, the top line, which is completing a sentence from the previous page, the yogic message, and this is of Lahiri Mahasaya, will encircle the globe and aid in establishing that brotherhood of man which results from, and then on page 286, direct perception of the one Father. Now, if you take into my into account my obsession, <laughs> I meant in a good way, but my obsession with um, Jesus' ministry being specifically to tell us that God's name is our Heavenly Father, His Father, His Dad, Abba. Um, You know, if I'm recording, I'm always pushing this, aren't I? And this morning was particularly um, fluent. I've produced very short, but many recordings, as you can see on this date. And they've been focused at the heart of the matter, as you can tell from the recordings. So I take this as an amazing confirmation, miraculous word, quite simply, that I'm on track. I mean, breathtakingly on track. YouTube, as I've said often before, is, is staggering in that it's available to anyone. Anyone that God leads to it. And I do mean that because I've deliberately not advertised it other than the people I meet, if I think if I'm led to give them my card, business card if you like, it's not a business but you know what I mean, I give them my card which has the YouTube reference on it, Marshall Richard Hope. and. If God draws them to listen to it, that's good. And if he doesn't, I know that is also good. No sweat, <laughs> if you know what I mean. No stress. I'm not um, the Christian evangelist. I am what I am. By the grace of God. Thank you, Dad. 
on that um, same page, 286, I'll just read you a paragraph that I had marked out mm, probably a few years ago now. So this is Paramahansa writing. The effective League of Nations will be a natural, nameless League of Human Hearts. The broad sympathies and discerning insight needed for the healing of earthly woes cannot flow from a mere intellectual consideration of man's diversities, but from knowledge of man's soul unity, his kinship with God. Kinship with God means same family, right? Toward realization of the world's highest ideal, peace through brotherhood, may yoga, the science of personal contact with the divine, spread in time to all men in all lands. Well, Paramahansa was speaking in 1945, um, end of the Second World War. And he wrote then on the next page, let the divine words be heard again in this 20th century. And he's referring to um, Abraham's plea to God in the Old Testament that the city of Sodom be spared if 10 righteous men could be found therein. And the divine reply was, I will not destroy it for 10's sake. Well, um, Paramahansa writes then, let the divine words be heard again. In this 20th century, twice died in blood, ere half over. No nation that can produce 10 men, great in the eyes of the unbridgeable judge, meaning God, of course, shall know extinction. Heeding such persuasions, India has proved herself not witless against the thousand cunnings of time. Self-realized masters in every century have hallowed her soil. Modern Christ-like sages like Lahiri Mahasaya and his disciple Sri Yukteswar rise up to proclaim that the science of Kriya is more vital than any material advances to man's happiness and to a nation's longevity. There you go. Well, uh, Lahiri's um, teaching was Kriya Yoga, which he gave to any earnest seeker. Didn't matter what the religion was or not. Anyone who was earnestly seeking, he would give it. And the Kriya Yoga was this practice, um, rather like uh, the triangular breathing that I, I discourse on to you and practice myself. Well, I'm not asking you to apply your intellect. I'm simply saying taste and see. If you find it works, you will be proof against any argument. <laughs> to the contrary. Bless you. I wouldn't have thought breathing in a certain way and attempting to put the mind to the presence of God. by a mantra or some suitable words, might be a text. You might use a Christian, very Christian one, like I am, um, I and my Father are one. You may be specific, I and my Heavenly Father are one. You know, something that you truly value, and you repeat it. 
One of the um, poets, I'm not sure if it was Tennyson, but just repeating his name could take him into what we would call an ecstatic state. Repeating his own name. <laughs> really? <laughs> Astonishing. How much more than just repeating our Heavenly Father. Love you. Not just some magic, you know. It's the pause, holding the breath for a short while. For the same count. You know, it might be six, it might be ten. Whatever is comfortable. I suspect allows the oxygen to pass more fully into the bloodstream. And you've got in the back of your mind God breathed into Adam and he became a living soul. Wow. We do that again, perhaps. Perhaps. But you'll find out if you practice earnestly, if you want to love God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength, he's not going to say no even if what you're doing is unreasonable. What's that got to do with it? You're a child. Parents love their children. How much more does God love you? And knowing that, your heavenly dad loves you. How could you possibly fail? No way. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Dad. <laughs>